Kegs, all system. Mufflers. So, you know, when you have this ag tractor, we have this combine, and they have these big mufflers, and they have this stack on top of the muffler. All right? And it's what? Three, four, five inches? Isn't that an awesome rain gauge? <laughs> Seriously? Right? How many of your customers, if they store, they're well, actually storing inside outside, I don't, I don't really care, don't care. How many of them have rain caps or put a coffee can or whatever over the top of their stack when they park that machinery? Ooh, I don't see many hands going up. <laughs> Good idea to do it. Okay? And here's why. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> okay. Inside that muffler, there's metal, right? So, correct me if I'm wrong, but metal plus rain plus oxygen equals rust, correct? Now, the exhaust is going to push the rust out, right? But year after year after year, won't that metal start, like, completely disintegrating? Then we have this, back pressure. I will never get the exhaust out of the engine because it physically can't get out of the engine, all right? So if I don't protect that somehow, then we will end up with some severe back pressure. So if I can't get, so an engine has to breathe. We gotta, we've talked about getting the air in there. Well, now we've got to get the crap out the other end. Well, if it can't get the crap out the other end, then I know one, <coughs> I can't get air in, or the right amount of air. Number two, I still put the fuel in, but I can't completely burn the fuel. So now we, we're wasting fuel, we've got low power, we're not happy with what we're doing, you know, the list goes on and on, okay? So putting some type of a cap on top, and I, I've, hell, I've, I've given customers coffee cans, I've punched the damn holes in the side and they can put wire straps on to tie the damn things down, all right? It's not a big deal, but they've got to get those things covered. Now, inside it still is important, okay? If, you know, a lot of your, your um, producers will be able to store their machinery inside a building, okay? Typically, they're not heated. Sometimes they won't have doors, at least they've got a roof over their head. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but it blows a hell of a lot around Montana. So, if I don't have a cover on this muffler, the wind is going to spin up my turbo. Okay, it's going to work backwards. Now, remember we talked about lubrication of that turbocharger? If my engine is not running, do I have any oil flowing over that bearing and that shaft? So it's running dry. So that thing can, if that wind gets whipping, I mean, that turbo is going to spin backwards. You know, it could get up to 50, 60,000 RPM pretty damn quick. And with no lubrication there, well, if you want to start replacing turbos, that's a real good way to do it. And those things do not come cheap. Some of them we're talking five figures, okay? So wind is a huge issue, wind and rain, plus you know, the mice and the birds and rodents and all that other crap we have running around out there. You don't want them on your muffler, okay? They're gonna, you know, they'll die of carbon monoxide poisoning, but they're not gonna get pushed out. They're gonna start plugging up your, your muffler as well. So now we're back to back pressure, all right? So have your egg producers, Next coffee can, don't throw the thing away. Save it and put it over your, your muffler, okay? Cooling system. Oh man, there's like a plethora of different coolants out there. It's ridiculous how many coolants are out there. We have reds and we have greens, we have purples, and we have oranges, we have OTCs and we have glycols and I Lord knows what else we have out there, all right? Your ag producers need to be very, very particular about the coolant. That's, what, remember the first slide we had that little red thing called an owner's manual? All right, this is why this is gonna get important, okay? <laughs> Even though they don't have one, they need to get one. Because their owner's manual will tell them what type of coolant they should be using in that engine, okay? Some coolants you can inadvertently mix and, well, it's going to be half-ass okay. Other coolants, if you mix them, it turns to like this really yucky gel. And it is nasty. Okay? Seen it, had to deal with it. I didn't do it, luckily. 
One of my customers did. And I can't remember what the two colons were, but it was, ooh, it was not nice. And we had to completely disassemble and completely flush that whole system several times. Very, very expensive. Just because he decided he wanted to top off the coolant with something he just had on the shelf. Didn't work out too good for him. Okay? So you need to be very particular about the types of coolants. Okay? And typically we're going to mix it a 50-50 with tap water, correct? You see, you get your bottle, your jug of glycol or whatever, and 50-50, is that correct, with tap water? Is that what you guys are doing? I buy the pre-mix. <laughs> Good, I like that. <laughs> well, those of us who said yes with tap water, well, let's not do that. Okay. Um, we really want to use, and I don't care actually if it's diesel or gasoline, we really want to use distilled water. Okay? So we're going to go with our 50-50, or we'll, 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 we'll do the cheap thing. We'll, we'll drive pre-mix. I've done that before. Absolutely. <laughs> okay? 50-50 with, with um, distilled water. The reason is, same with our oil, with our fuel, there's additive packages in there. And those additive packages are designed to do specific things. Right? It might be anti-corrosion, it might be pressure sensitive, you know, whatever. Okay? If you add in good old tap water, you've just put in a whole bunch of minerals, right? Or other things. Okay? Now you've completely messed up the balance of that additive package. Okay? So you really do want to go with distilled water. All right? And I, I'm, actually, I'm a huge advocate of that. Absolutely huge. Even in my own gasoline car. My service trucks are diesel, but everything else they have is gasoline. I, uh, it's always distilled water. Or I, I do by the pre-mix as well. Yeah, okay. 50-50 um, is typically our mix. I know some people, uh, you go further north, will go to a 70% mix. That, you know, we're, so the, what is that, let me back up. What is our coolant there to do? Why is it in the engine? To cool it, right? <laughs> All right, so we, we burn this fuel. We create a tremendous amount of heat. The heat is what's going to you know, push that piston down, which turns the crankshaft, which makes the wheels turn and do something at the other end. Well, actually only a portion of that heat does that. A portion of that heat is expelled through the exhaust system, and a portion of that heat is expelled through the cooling system. Okay. So if my exhaust system and or my cooling system are not up to snuff, I will have some overheating engines, which is not a good place to be. Okay? So, back to our coolant. And it is a sealed system. So it's under pressure. So what that is going to do it is going to raise the boiling point, right? So if I go with a 50-50 mix, if a lot of the jugs that I've seen, you have this little chart on the side of them that will raise the boiling point to you know, whatever degrees if you go with this mix or this mix. You can only get to a certain point where that starts going the other way. And I believe it's between 65 and 70 percent. So if I have 70 percent coolant and 30 percent water, that's about the maximum coolant you can have. If you go above 70 percent, you know, 71, 75, 80 percent coolant and less and less water, you're actually going to decrease the boiling point of that coolant. All right? So make sure they pay attention to what that mix is. Typically, I'm going to say most of your ag, probably all of your ag producers, they're just going to go with the standard 50 50 mix. I know up in Alaska, um, one of my friends runs, where he's a supervisor of mine at uh, Fairbanks, and, and they do run, a, I think it's a 65% mix up there, because apparently it gets kind of chilly in Alaska at times. Okay? So it's chilly here too. Okay, it is a sealed system. If it is not sealed, then you're not going to raise the boiling point of that coolant. Therefore, you will have an overheating engine. All right? Do you guys know if any of your ag producers remove the thermostats from their engines? Because if they do, you need to have a very serious chat with them. Really, really bad thing to do for your engine. Okay? And I know of more than I could name off about five guys right now I know who have done that. And I don't care if it's actually diesel or gasoline. Why do they do that? Because it will over, uh, overcool the engine. Okay? And if, the reason why they have done it is because we have an overheating engine. 
Well, let's just pull a thermostat out. <laughs> Instead of diagnosing what the hell the problem is, let's just pull a damn thermostat out. Well, that's actually more work than what it is to diagnose the problem. So they pull a the thermostat out. Well, now we have no regulation of that. The engine will never, ever warm up. Okay? It took care of the overheating, all right? But if I don't warm up the engine, then my cylinder temperature is going to never get warmed up. So now I'm not going to completely burn my fuel. Now I'm going to be wasting fuel. I'm going to have low power. You know, the list just goes on and on and on. All right. So can I stop you for a second? Right there. Is that that's the same situation with too much coolant and not enough water? Correct. Yes. It doesn't overheat. It just reduces. Reduces. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, if <coughs> if your customers have removed the thermostats, first thing I would do is ask them, why did you remove the thermostat? All right. Well, it was overheating. Oh, okay. That's fair. That's fair. Why was it overheating? They probably won't have an answer for you because they haven't looked at why the hell it was overheating. This one right here is the biggest reason I found why systems <coughs> overheated is the radiator cap. You know, I probably sold enough radiator caps to sink a damn battleship. Okay? And a lot of times it's because, you know, the radiator caps have that rubber seal. So every time you take off or put that on that radio cap, you're going to ruin that seal. Once that seal is gone, you cannot, you will never ever hold the pressure in that system. It's physically impossible. You replace the radiator cap, solve that overheating problem. All right? If we can't control the heat, we put that engine under load, you better believe that temperature is going to skyrocket. All right? So radiator caps is a huge issue. Hoses and clamps, heater hoses, you know, make sure your, your ag producers check the integrity of all, make sure the, the, the clamps are tight, <coughs> not broken, that they're actually there, all right? Uh, and don't have, have them not forget the heating system, because that is part of the cooling system too, all right? So all those heater hoses that are rubbing against each other, you know, you might want to get an old radio hose and strap it around there just to get them apart. Right, or some standoff clamps to do whatever they need to do. Okay. Um, you know, I like spending other people's money, so this is kind of cool. Um, one thing I had a lot of my customers buy was a uh, cooling system pressure kit, pressure test kit. And basically, what it is, it's a basically it's just a pump. Okay, there's a pump, has a tube, and it has a cap. You take off your radiator cap, you put it on your radiator, and you start pumping up. Every system has a system pressure that it should hold at. If you look on the radiator cap, it will be might be a 13 pound, 14.5, 16, whatever. So you just pump it up, and you look at the cap, oh, 16 pound, pump it up to 16 pounds. If that system is sealed, that gauge on that tester is going to stay at 16 pounds, or 13 or wherever it's supposed to be at. All right, that makes sense? So now we take it off the radiator, we put on an adapter, and I put on my radiator cap. And I pump that up to 16 or whatever pounds. If it's good, it's going to stay exactly there. If it's not good, the pressure's going to bleed off. Well, test it again, bleed off. That one goes in the garbage, we put a new radiator cap on. If the system pressure doesn't hold in the cooling system, then because it's under pressure, I can now just visually go around and see where I'm leaking. All right? Might be a hose that's a little seep in it, might be a hose clamp. But here's the kicker. I look at every single coolant hose, radiator hose, whatever, um, hoses going into my air compressor, if it's got air brake system, every single hose that has coolant in it. I don't find any leaks, but I'm losing pressure. Where's that pressure going? Exactly. That's exactly where it's going. Not an easy fix, all right? So we're talking it could be a head gasket, it could be a cracked block, it could be a cracked head, it could be a lot of other things out there. But we have started to diagnose what the problem is, all right? So that tool, when I bought mine, I think it was about $125. I picked mine up down at CarQuest. I'd highly advise you guys to recommend that to your, your, your ag producers, okay? Just out of curiosity, Steve, how much does, uh, I mean, I know it's going to vary between each system, but how much does a coolant system cost if you have to replace it? Replace the whole system? Yeah. Oof. Um, 
you're probably you're way into four figures if you had to replace a radiator yeah, yeah. Um, I'm thinking one well, is probably five or six thousand just you know picking numbers yeah and you know some of those hoses alone can be a hundred bucks a piece yeah. yeah how expensive are the kits uh, mine was $125, but several years ago. So I'm thinking 100 and quarter, 150. Okay. Yeah, they're not really expensive, and they typically will come. You can, you, there's different kits, but some of them will come with adapters because most of your um, your necks of your your radiators and your um, caps are different sizes for different, like your Asian versus your European versus your domestic on highway, domestic off highway, whatever. So they'll typically you can buy accessories or buy a whole kit with all those different adapters in there. And that will be you know, a little more price, but then you can test all the pieces of equipment, all vehicles on your place too. So the 125 was for the basic? Yeah, it was a basic one, with a couple of, of basic adapters on it, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, and, and I don't care if it's gasoline or diesel, I could care less. They should be checking on every single one, mm -hmm. every single one. So the cooling system on it, it's got to be checked, okay? So, sorry for another question, but... Um, don't apologize. Would you recommend them doing it only when there's a problem or doing it on like a yearly basis? Uh, I checked most of my customers every time I did an oil change. It was just part of what I did. Yeah, part of what I did. Um, I, if Probably about 30% of my work was in a shop. The rest was out in the construction site or, or the agricultural field or whatever. And I had that kit in my um, service truck. So whenever I'd go out there, I would just do it as a matter of course. If I was working on the semi or I was working on the combine, I'd just check it, just to do it. All right. um, my perspective was, was somewhat a little bit different. Number one, I wanted to look after my customers. You want guys to look after your ag producers. But number two, it's a thing called an upsell. I mean, there was money in it for me if I could sell a radiator cap. But there was also the, the recognition that I was looking after the customer. So there's recognition for you guys if you're looking after your egg producers to do that. Because the radiator cap is going to be a heck of a lot cheaper than having to replace. Uh, like $10? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a heck of a lot cheaper. <laughs> so Nicole's question reminded me, I was going to ask on the air filters, how often are those supposed to be? Uh, if you have a filter minder, it depends upon oh, what you, your, your working conditions are. You're on clay soils versus sandy soil versus you know wet, dry. Yeah, so it's going to vary upon application and, and um, or even what the piece of machinery is. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a huge proponent of those air minders. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's keep these things clean. So and I'm talking about you know the air between those little fins. Okay. Get them blowed out, get your air guns out, or you know, actually, well, your, your air producers, I guess, not you guys. Um, the, the, the issue here nowadays is, okay, so we have a radiator in front of our engine. In front of that, we will have an air conditioning condenser. We might have a, an oil cooler, we might have a transmission cooler, an engine oil cooler, transmission cooler. In front of that, we're gonna have a uh, air charge after cooler for the turbocharger. So we have all this crap stacked well, or I guess you yeah, we also probably should toss in there um, uh, any EGR type stuff, if any coolers in there, all right? So we've got a whole bunch of stacked in front of each other. The air has to go through those before it can even get to the engine, because your air is actually going to help cool off that engine too, right? Well, if it can't get through this crap, it's not going to get to your engine, so now we're going to have an engine overheating. Or we might have a high oil pressure on a transmission. We might have our air conditioner not working, et cetera, et cetera. So, we need to get out with our air hose and make sure these things are clean. I would not recommend going full blast at 135 psi from the shop tank. All right, let's kind of regulate that down a little bit. Okay, if it's steel, not a big deal. Most of your air conditioning condensers are aluminum finned, and if you want to flatten them out, that's a really good way to do it. And I have been there, and well, I've, I've dealt with the results of a customer doing that, and he didn't want to straighten the fins out. Oh my lord. It took at least, I think it was four hours to do most of one air conditioning condenser. It sucked. Just a little teeny flat blade screwdriver. Gee, gee, gee. It's terrible. Lordy. So have you, your producers be very careful about how they do clean these out. A lot will get out with just a, a regular garden hose, low pressure, and just kind of take some time, drizzle that water over there. 
then I would suggest that you go ahead and blow some air through there as well, okay? How do you feel about the power washer if you kind of put on a different head to decrease versus the... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is also an extremely efficient way of flattening off the blades on aluminum. Yeah. If it's total steel, um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, every air conditioner condenser I've ever been around has been aluminum. And those things flatten just looking at the damn things will flatten them. Yeah. And they totally suck to try and get them straight. So I would not recommend power washing them. Now, if there's no air conditioning, um, so just have your, your air producer look very closely, check out what the metal is, and I wouldn't you know, spray right up here, I'd be back over here somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Just be very, very careful. I would, and all honestly, I'd say no. The garden hose will get most of it out, then just get low pressure air. So it'll take a little more time, that's fine. Okay, if it takes fine, that's, you know, it takes a little day, then that's what it is. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than having to repair stuff. Okay. Yeah, good question. Okay. So how often should corn be changed? Depends on what year it was. And technically it should be changed for you to get to a shop, correct? Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. Um well, the owner, the owner's may not have that. It should have it, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it's yeah, you're you're both right. It's gonna vary on application and vary by manufacturer. Industry rule of thumb is about once every two years. Well, you know, when I look at those cooling systems, <laughs> that's a hell of a lot of coolant. Yeah, we're talking gallons of coolant here on a big ag tractor, a swather, a combine, gallons. So now we have the issue of, you know, if we take it to a shop, you know, they have the problem of disposing of it. You know, we really don't want to dump the stuff on the ground, all right? A lot of people do, and I, 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 I totally hate that. I really do. Um, it just ruins a lot of things, kills a lot of stuff that doesn't need to kill. So we have a disposal issue now if we do it ourselves. But typically, when you're out in a farm, they're not going to road in a big-ass tractor, a big combine into town to have them change the coolant. They're just going to do it right on the farm. If they have, it's a Caterpillar Challenger and they have Caterpillar come out and do it, well, you know, that's 150 bucks an hour when they leave the shop, by the way, plus $2 a mile both ways. Now, that's, that gets very expensive. So one thing that, you know, that, again, I like spending other people's money, but another thing that your ag producers should buy is what we call a coolant test strip, okay? They're good for multiple types of coolants, and they come in, and I, I used to get mine from either Fleet Guard or from CarQuest, and I mean, pretty much every parts house has them. They're in a sealed little container, you undo the top, you take out one strip, put it on the bench, seal it back up, you take that strip and you dip it into the coolant. You pull it back out, and there's going to be a graduation of colors. And you compare that with a chart that's on the side of the little container of the test strips. And that will tell you uh, a lot about the nitrates, but more importantly, the pH level. Okay? If that pH level is out of balance, then we're going to start ruining the inside of that engine. Okay? Uh, the nitrates will also start ruining the inside of the engine. What happens with the nitrates is they put a coating on the inside of all the galleries where the, the coolant runs around. It's a, a scale. One-sixth of an inch of scale, and that's not very big, equates to one-quarter inch of metal. <laughs> so we're losing a lot of heat rejection. So that heat has to be rejected somehow. Well, that's going to go back into the combustion chamber. And it's going to go out the exhaust. So now I'm going to start having some hot exhaust temperatures, and I could be pushing melting pistons. All right? The pH level is also going to start eating at the metal. There's two things will pick away at the metal. Number one is the, the pH level, it's acidic. Number two is if I have air in the cooling system. When I start pressurizing that air, those little air bubbles, they implode and they start pick, pick, picking away at the metal. Okay, and what's gonna happen is, so on our engine, we most of our diesel engine have a, have a liner 
where the piston runs in. If I punch a hole in that liner, I now have coolant going into that combustion chamber. All right. So I'm going to be losing coolant. I have no idea where until I start seeing white smoke coming out the exhaust pipe on a warm engine. You'll see white smoke on a cold engine. If you see in a warm engine, you've got coolant in there. Okay. Now that is an engine rebuilt. Okay, and that's kind of spendy. All right. So again, that sealed system will take care of those air bubbles, but also testing the coolant will take care of you know if we had to add or you know uh, uh, an additive to that cooling system or change out the coolant. Okay. So we're not just going to change it every two years just because that's what we're supposed to do. We're going to be a little more thoughtful about what we do. Same with that oil and fuel fills and all that sort of stuff. Okay. While I'm thinking about that, one thing I didn't talk about on the exhaust system, one thing that all of your customer or your, your ag producers should have on their diesel engines is a pyrometer. You guys heard of what a pyrometer is? It measures the heat of the exhaust. And to me, that is an absolute necessity. Absolute. There'll be a probe that goes into, it should be at the outlet of the turbocharger. And it will send an analog signal back to a gauge that's on the dash. They'll basically show you what the temperature of the engine is. So if that engine's under a load, you, know, you might see maybe 900 and thousand, maybe pushing 1100 degrees. And that's fine. If you start pushing 1150 or 1200 degrees, you have a problem. Now remember, that's at the outlet of the turbo. So the combustion chamber is going to be a hell of a lot hotter than that, right? Aluminum melts at 1250 degrees, give or take. So if I have 1200 degrees at the outlet of the turbo, I get a pretty good chance I'm starting to melt pistons. Okay, so if it's starting to creep up, well, you know what? Maybe I better pull that plow to the ground. Maybe I better pull a few shanks off. Maybe I better grab another gear to go up the hill and you know, do whatever I need to do to start taking load off that engine and start backing off that temperature. All right. So and that and I have retrofitted a lot of engines with that. Um, most of your exhaust systems somewhere around that area will have a sort of a plug. You just undo the plug, screw in the, the probe, hook up the gauge, and life is good. Some have actually had to drill a hole and tap it to screw it in. You know, you, you, they have to do what they have to do. All right? But to me, it's an absolute necessity. Some pieces of equipment, you will find the, that probe is at the inlet of the exhaust into the turbocharger. The only thing I don't like about that is if that probe ever vibrated and broke off, it's gone through the turbo. All right, so I always put them on the outlet. If it goes out the exhaust, well, you know, this is the way it is. Life's, you know. But it goes to the turbo, whoops, now we're replacing turbochargers. All right, so that pyrometer is also another piece of a tool or sensor, or whatever, should be on there, um, piece of equipment. Okay.